Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. This is Ashley, and I hope that you are all doing very well. And if this is your first time um, tuning into my channel, uh, we welcome you. And I truly hope that uh, my messages will help you to build your faith in Christ as a child of God. And remember that you are more than conquerors through him who loves you. And today's message, um, I will speak on four ways to respond to Satan's devices. So we will explore a vital and empowering aspect of our Christian journey. And the full armor of God is something that we must take heed of each and every day. Uh, we live in a world that consistently challenges our faith and our integrity. And it's so crucial to understand how we can stay strong and faithful and discerning during those times. And so I'm going to cover um, four ways and... I'm going to just uh, share with you 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, which reads, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And we know that Satan is our opposer. He studies us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows the word of God. So it is our duty to understand and to know his devices and how we as Christians should respond to Satan's attacks. And as Christians, we are guided and we are given this information by the word of God, which is why it is so important to be familiar with scripture. As Christians, the Bible is our guide while dwelling on earth. It is our instruction book on how we shall live and how we shall walk in the identity that we have in Christ Jesus and how we should walk as believers dwelling on the fallen earth. And so the first uh, scripture I'm going to share with you is 1 Peter chapter 5 through 8. And this will be the first way that we can respond to Satan's devices. And it reads, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So this verse is to encourage and strengthen us in our faith and reminding us to always be firm in our faith and to be vigilant. So alertness, meaning um, in this case, Peter is urging believers to be watchful and aware of our spiritual surroundings. And this means being conscious of the potential dangers and temptations that can lead us astray from our faith. And so sober mind is this calls for a clear, disciplined and self-controlled mindset, which we know the fruit of the spirit does provide us self-control. And this will help us to avoid spiritual complacency and help us to remain focused on God's truth because the truth will set us free, right? And the, the word is a, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And I will say this again, we are living in times where we cannot we cannot uh, walk this earth without the wisdom of God, without God's truth, without the truth of Christ. And the Bible is so important to take heed of uh, during these times. And even uh, by reading just a couple of scriptures a night, um, it is so important because we know that the enemy will do everything in his power to bring spiritual laziness upon us, to take the word away from us. And this is something that we want to be aware of because the word of God is going to help us to remain disciplined and focused on the truth, on God's word, on God's plan and purpose for our life. And it is so important to know this because without the word of God, we would not know how we should respond to Satan's devices. And without responding in a spiritual manner, if we respond in the flesh, we will be defeated. So we have to remember that we must be grounded in the word of God at all times. And um, the enemy uh, is the lion. He is the devil. And he roars around and he, he seeks who he can devour. So if we are not aware and vigilant in the word of God, it is so easy to be prone to the attacks of Satan. And so we must always be vigilant and carry our spiritual discernment at all times because like the word says that he is looking for someone to devour. So his intentions are to cause us harm. He is not our friend. He is our enemy. He is our opposer. And remember, as Christ says that the devil comes to still kill and destroy, but Christ has come that we may have life and life more abundantly. So it is so important to ground yourself in the truth of God and the word of God, because Satan's goal is to destroy humanity, to destroy our faith and disrupt the relationship between us believers and our almighty father. So we want to be sure 
that we are becoming closer to God each day as believers, not further away from God. And Satan will do what he can to uh, get you to doubt your faith, to get you to, to sin, to get you to live in disobedience. So it's so important. This is how Satan devours us through sin. So we must always be vigilant in the word of God and knowing the devices that the enemy does uh, seek to use to destroy believers. And this is one way. And um, spiritual vigilance, um, we are, like I mentioned, so encouraged to stay spiritually vigilant. And this means regularly examining our life, avoiding situations that can lead to sin, and being aware of the spiritual battle that is constantly around us. And maintaining a sober mind involves staying grounded in the truth of God's word and practicing self-control, making wise decisions that align with our Christian beliefs and values and the principles of God. So we must rec resisting the devil, right? We must resist the devil and he will flee as scripture says, but we need to recognize the devil's tactics. And so we must stand firm against the temptation by being prepared and alert. And we can resist his attempts to lead us astray. And once again, this is why the Holy Spirit has put this upon my heart to redirect all believers back to the word of God, because this is where we find our truth. This is our sword. And we know that the word of God is living and powerful and active uh, um, as any uh, sharpened two-edged sword. And we could read this in Hebrews 4.12. So we, we know that the Bible will help us to discern the truth from the error of life, right? And so it is so important. And in 1 Peter um, 5.8, it serves as a powerful reminder for us to remain vigilant and disciplined in our spiritual lives because we are no longer walking in the flesh. Once we have accepted Christ, the moment we accepted Christ into our lives, we are now walking in the spirit. And so by understanding the threat possessed by the devil and adopting proactive and watchful approaches, believers can protect their faith and stay firmly rooted in their relationship with God. And number two, we can find in Ephesians chapter four, verse 27, and it says, do not give the devil a foothold. And I think this is something that we absolutely need to be vigilant about. Um, we are a new uh, creation in Christ. And so the, remember, the former has passed away and each and every day is a sanctification process. It is living to be holy and righteous in the eyes of God, right? Each and every day. We are working to become more conformed into the image of Christ, uh, more mature, more holy, and living as one body in Christ, right? As the Holy Spirit helps us to adapt these characteristics. And so we don't want to give the devil a foothold in our life. And a foothold means a place or an opportunity or an advantage, a small opening or opportunity that can be exploited for a larger purpose to sin, basically. So uh, for example, if you are getting over alcohol addiction, you don't want to go to a particular or be in a particular atmosphere that can tempt you into sinning because this is where the devil will wait for you, right? Waiting to get that foothold right in, seeing you pick up a drink in your hand and telling you to drink it, and then one leads to another and so on and so forth, or whatever that you may be, um, any addiction that you may be um, overcoming or just anything in your life that Satan once had you afflicted and bounded to, you don't want to give him an, a foothold back into that area of your life because this is how he will tempt you into sinning against God. And once you accepted Christ, like I mentioned, you are a new creation and now it's, it's a spiritually filled journey while you're dwelling on earth. So remember that Satan seeks to disrupt, deceive and destroy the lives of believers. So we don't want to give him a foothold in our lives. And we know, um, uh, sin and anger, right? In, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, Paul talks about putting off falsehood and speaking truthfully and managing anger without sinning. Just as scripture says, be angry and do not sin. So it's so important because these instructions highlight behaviors that if we don't control them, if we don't utilize self-control, we can give the devil an opportunity to influence and disrupt our lives because we know that uh, anger can lead into sinning. So it's so important to just really be mindful of when uh, the enemy is trying to come in and trying to get a foothold in your life because we know that Satan will tempt us uh, on various levels in every single day of our lives, which is why it is so important to understand this and to not give Satan a foothold. Um, and we can avoid this, giving Satan a foothold, um, like I mentioned, by living a righteous life. So Paul emphasizes the importance of living a life that reflects the new nature, the new uh, nature 
the new creation that you have through Christ walking in the spirit because the Holy Spirit lives within you. And this includes um, as just really practicing self-control and love, um, which love we know covers a multitude of sins. And this will fortify believers and renew our spirits each and every day. And we will be aware of the devil's schemes because the more we are living holy and righteous, the more the Holy Spirit will start to manifest his fruits through us. And the more we will become sensitive and discerned, we will gain that discerning spirit from the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who gives us that discerning spirit to be mindful when things seem off. And we are, are urged to be vigilant and proactive in guarding our hearts and minds. And this involves avoiding actions and attitudes that can create vulnerabilities um, and bitterness, anger, or deceit. We know that um, we want to, the fruits of the spirit uh, will give us love, joy, peace, um, a long suffering, gentleness, kindness. And you can find this in Galatians chapter five, verses 22 to 23. And I remember when I first started my walk with uh, Jesus Christ in December of 2023, I, I'm sorry, December of uh, 2022, one of the questions I asked God was how can I be more conformed into the image of Christ as I was still learning the biblical principles and and taking heed of the word of God. And it's so amazing because the Lord did not lead me to a church. He did not lead me to seek godly counsel. The first thing the Lord told me was, you're going to get to know me by my word. And he led me um, to that specific question I had. He led me to Galatians chapter five, verses 22 to 23, which speaks on how we can be more like Christ by, by manifesting the fruits of our fruits of the spirit within us. Because the fruits of the spirits are the, the fruits that Christ carried and what Christ teaches us. And um, this is why we must uh, self-examine ourselves and be disciplined and regularly examining our life um, for, especially in the areas where we fall short, where sin might creep in and take hold of us, practicing self-discipline in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions will help prevent giving the devil an opportunity uh, to have influence in our lives. Because it, like I said, the devil he watches us. He also sends out monitoring spirits that watch our that watch us, that watch us and remember that the devil does not work alone. He also has what you may have heard being called monitoring or familiar spirits out in this world. He sends his agents out. Um, he will send people into your life at times um, that will uh, actually look and see how you are becoming. Basically, are, are they look they look and see if you are how where your weaknesses are and where your strengths are right so they can they can give this information back to the kingdom of darkness and this is another way that satan works through others and so we must always be careful and be vigilant like i said and be spiritually disciplined and discerned and so we would just always want to ensure that we forgive and um that is something that the lord jesus christ teaches us and forgiveness is something that we can ask the Lord Jesus Christ to help us do. Uh, if you are if you are um, harboring an unforgiving heart, the Lord Jesus Christ can come in and he can help you. He can help you to forgive those who wronged you because we know that unforgiveness does decay our hearts. And we are actually only harming ourselves when we have when we have an unforgiving heart. So it's so important to release this to the Lord Jesus and he will definitely help you. And this is why also um, strengthening our spiritual practices, we can do this by prayer, um, reading scripture, as I, as I continue to mention throughout this video, and, and also participating in community worship. Um, it strengthens believers and helps us to stay alert to the devil's tactics. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27 does serve as a, as a warning to Christians about the dangers of giving even a small opportunity to the devil. So by living a life characterized by honesty, self-control, and righteousness, we can prevent the devil from gaining a foothold and maintain our spiritual integrity. And remember that this discernment helps ensure that our lives reflect the new nature, the new identity that we have in Christ. And thirdly is um, going to be taken from James chapter four, verses seven through eight. And if you want to pause this video to take notes of these scriptures, I highly encourage you to take notes of these scriptures because they will definitely help you. And we are coming into perilous times and the enemy is attacking the minds of believers and unbelievers but he is totally trying to bring down god's children and god's chosen so these scriptures will help you will help you to maintain um that spiritual strength and discernment and help you to build your faith because we have the word of god as our anchor 
and these scriptures can serve as them. Um, and then it says, uh, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you're double-minded. And it's so important, these two verses together, because like it says, resist the devil and he will flee. When we when we submit ourselves to God, when we are living in righteousness, when we, like I mentioned, when we are being obedient to God, the devil cannot have a foothold in our lives. And this is what frustrates him. There's nothing that frustrates the devil more than living righteously and holy and being obedient to God, because he does everything in his power to do to take that away from the life of believers. He wants us to be separated right from God, because this is how he can have a foothold. And it's why it's so important. James writes, come near to God and he will come near to you and wash your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And it's so important because this challenges us to live righteously and live in obedience to God. And like I mentioned, we are coming into those latter days where the enemy is attacking the body of church. And it's so important to live righteously and to live holy in the eyes of God. And the book of James you could say is a practical guide for living out our Christian faith. And it's uh, James addresses conflicts and desires that lead believers away from God. And he calls for humility and a return to God's ways. And I don't think that many uh, teachers or preachers or pastors preach on this enough. And it's so important that we, we all need encouragement. Yes. We all need positive words, but it's also, it's also important to truly hear the truth of God's word, right? Not to be led astray by the itching ear gospel every single time you sit down in church and they don't warn you about the, disru the this, um, disruptions that come our path. They don't warn you truly about how the enemy attacks. They keep you in a position of just uh, like they call the itching ear gospel of uh, peace and prosperity and health and wealth. And this is how the devil works. The devil operates in churches like this because he will do anything in his power to keep the truth away. And the truth is saving souls. That is what Jesus Christ's commission is to go out and preach the gospel to all the nations, right? To save souls, right? And so um, it's important. It's so important to keep that in mind. And this verse does challenges us. And yes, he does say, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So submission to God involves yielding to God's authority and will. It's a call to humbly align our life with God's commands, guidance, and his will, because we know that God's plan and purpose for us is always the best. And he has predestined you with a purpose and plan before the creation of time, before you were born in your mother's room. God knew you and God knew what he was going to use you for. And the enemy will do whatever he can to keep you from fulfilling God's will. And so it is so important that we resist the devil's attacks and schemes and temptations that we resist them. And these are ways that you can stand firm in faith. And so let me go ahead and just, we always want to make sure uh, that if we do sin, um, which we will, and, and I understand that that's the fallen world we live in, but we want to do everything in our power to, to avoid sin at all costs. And, um, if you do sin, repentance and turning away from the sinful action is so crucial. You want to repent right away and not repeat the same sin. You want to repent and ask the Lord God to help you, to help you strengthen in those areas where you are weak or falling short, because it is so important to truly, like I mentioned, uh, cleanse your mind and purify your hearts, to live holy and righteous in the eyes of God. And when we do this, the enemy cannot have a foothold in our life. So remember, God will not allow the righteous to be moved. And so purifying our hearts uh, refers to inner transformation and sincerity, moving away from being double-minded, having one foot in and one foot out, right? So we, 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 we cannot have one foot in the world and one foot with God. And this is how we are to become pure in heart um, and to become sanctified each and every day. And the Holy Spirit helps you to do this. Um, and so I want to also just leave you to with, with this on that verse is to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit um, to overcome temptations and spiritual attacks, because he who is in one of my favorite verses that has always encouraged me. And when you rest in this truth, it's, it's a powerful anchor when you are dealing with spiritual warfare, um, with temptation or uh, Satan's devices is he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So just remember that. Um, 
Yes. And uh, I want to just uh, also mention that James chapter four, verse seven through eight, it does provide a powerful practical guide for living a faithful Christian life by submitting to God, resisting the devil, drawing near to God and pursuing repentance and inner purity. And this is how we can strengthen our relationship with God in itself and to stand firm against spiritual challenges. So just keep that in mind. God will always promise to protect us, but it, we must also uh, strive to live in obedience to God and to resist the enemy's temptations. And last but not least, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar of Ephesians chapter six, um, verses 10 through 18. And it does provide um, the armor of God. It encourages us to equip ourselves spiritually each and every day to stand firm against uh, the attacks of the enemy. And um ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 verse 18 it starts off be strong in the lord and the power of his might so we are not to be strong in ourselves but strong in the lord and not in the power of our flesh but in the power of his might and, the, and his mighty uh spirit and this is something to remember um is to continu continuously put on the full armor of god to stand against the devil's schemes and Paul explains that the struggle also is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of evil. And I believe that this is something to truly take heed of, that you are not fighting against flesh and blood. So if you try to take battles upon your own flesh, I will tell you, you will be defeated because it is only by the spirit, by the spirit of God, by being strong in the Lord and the power of his might, by surrendering to the Lord, being submissive to him, giving the battles to God and you doing your portion by standing firm in his armor that he provides to us, um, that you may stand firm and face uh, in the face of adversity. So the first piece of armor is the belt of truth. So fasten the belt of truth around your waist, meaning that truth is uh, foundational to the Christian life. And we know that all truth can be found in the Holy Bible through Christ. It holds everything together and it represents honesty, integrity, by, by, by taking heed and reading the truth of God's word. Next is the breastplate of righteousness. And this protects the heart and signifies living a righteous life through faith in Jesus. So it represents moral integrity and obedience to God's commands. And you could see how all these verses tie in with, with uh, also with the armor of God. The, go the shoes of the gospel of peace. So fit your feet with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace and it will help with your stability and readiness to spread the message of peace and reconciliation through christ and it encourages believers to be prepared to share the good news so if, i want to mention this again if you um if you feel in your heart by the holy spirit if he has put it upon your heart that god has chose you to preach the word in any way shape or form this is the commission of christ to preach the good news remember we want to reach those lost souls right this is our commission is to reach those who who um, are lost in the darkness of this world, who are under the, the, the devices of the evil one. We want to share with them the good news. Um, and number four is the shield of faith. And, it, and this is so important because like it reads, take up the shield of faith with, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. But above all, it says, take up the shield of faith because faith acts as a defense against doubt temptation and fear which is how the enemy attacks us and it protects us against the attacks of the enemy and strengthens the believers to trust in god's word and his promises and so faith above all else right it's so important and i i want to say and the holy spirit has been continuously putting upon my heart that standing firm in faith this season is crucial because the enemy is really going out of his way to attack the minds of believers and so it is so important um, this is a season of transformation and revelation and continue to stand firm in faith because the enemy, like I mentioned, will at attempt to attack your faith in God. And this is what we want to, above all else, like it says, is to, to be mindful and to keep on the shield of faith. And next is put on the helmet of salvation. And this protects the mind. Um, it symbolizes the assurance of the salvation that we have through Christ Jesus who died for our sins and and died um for our sins that we may be saved and not be uh separated from god that we may be reconciled to the lord god and it's so important to keep on the helmet of salvation because all those who call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and this is something to truly truly take heed of each and every single day of your life 
um, because it keeps us, our thoughts focused on the promises of God. And that promise is eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. Remember this world that we live in is temporal and the world that um, we live in is like I mentioned is temporal for our citizen is not of this earth, but it is in heaven. And this is the promise. This is the promise that the believers have the eternal life through Jesus Christ. And number six is the sword of the spirit. So take up the sword, which is the word of God. Um, and this is the only offensive weapon in the armor representing the word of God. It is used to counter the lies and temptations that the enemy throws our way and will provide us with strength and, and the Lord's guidance. So like I mentioned once again, that, and this is something the Holy Spirit did share, uh, want me to share with you as well, is to stay founded and stay grounded in God's word. And we also know that there's so much uh, deceptions and there's so much false teachers and preachers out there. And if we are not founded in the word of God, we can easily be, easily be led astray by the false teachers and false prophets. So it's so important to be founded by the word of God. And I always like to mention, if you are, are, are in doubt about the next steps that the Lord is calling for you to do, it is so important um, that you stay founded in the word of God and prayer, which Paul concludes by urging believers to pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, because there's nothing more stronger than that one-on-one -on -one communication that you have with God, because we were all gifted with a unique plan and purpose, and the Lord will always lead you through scripture, which is the main way he speaks to us is through scripture. If you are seeking answers, seek him through prayer. And it'll help us stay connected to God as well. So I just want to remind you, put on each piece of this armor that we can stand firm in faith and be victorious in the spiritual battles. Because remember that the battle is truly not ours, but it is the Lord's. And so we want to remain strong and steadfast in the power of God and the power of his might. And I truly hope that this message uh, did reach somebody today. I hope that it reached somebody who needed to hear this. And just keep in mind that God is always with you. Um, but we must stay visually uh, vigilant and we must be spiritually discerned at all times. Um, so I hope that these four ways to respond to Satan's devices did truly help you today. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today.